Hey there gang, it's brisket time. Stick around and I'll show the steps to achieving a simple overnight smoked brisket. I'm using my Masterbook Gravity Series 800 in this vid, but the techniques will apply to other barbecues as well. FYI, there is a link to the full written recipe in the description. It might seem like a lot of work, but if you plan ahead, it's a piece of cake. And if you do like what you see, kindly do the usual YouTube things three thumbs and subs. If you're lucky, maybe I'll see about sending a couple of slices to a random subscriber. Mm, what a prize, especially if you're watching this a year later. Crack a beer, let's start that trimming. While we're doing that, let's just cover a few other things you're going to need. Obviously, a big lump of brisket, a smoker slash barbecue, fuel and smoking chunks, assorted knives for your trimming, a large tray and rack, small saucepan for the tallow, a couple of meat probes. In this video, I use an Inkbird IHT1P and a meter plus. Two beach towels, definitely don't use your good ones. An esky, cooler, chili bun, depends where you're from, right? Butcher's paper, and not shown here, but some uh, spice rub of your choice as well. Now don't panic, it looks like I'm cutting a lot off this brisket. Obviously trying to get some good shape into it for a consistent cooking, but also remove any of the unwanted uh, sinew and fat layers but all the good bits are going back through the food processor to make the best mince you've ever had. And the clean white fat will keep in the little saucepan so we can render that down to make beef tallow. As a guide for timing, including filming, this trim took me about an hour. That's pretty slow going. Once you get confident, it'll take you far less than that. On with your spice rub. Just here I'm using a one-to-one -one of onion powder, garlic powder, and salt with a slightly less than one-to-one -one of black pepper. Once it's all nicely coated with your rub, pop it on a rack and into the fridge. So at 9.30pm, it's time to light up that smoker. So before I fill that hopper to the top with charcoal, I like to add a few smoking chunks. Pull the baffles, set the temp to 85C or 185F and light her up. And then come 10 p.m., it's time to put on that lovely big piece of brisket and your tallow in the small saucepan. Start your timer. Throw in another few wood chunks just before you go to bed. There we are, 10.05 p.m. Nighty night. And good morning. It's now 7 a.m. Sunday. As you can see on the timer, just under nine hours cooking time so far. At this point, we'll check on our fuel, as well as the bark and the temperature of the brisket. So as the temps are looking really good here, it's time to crank it up. I like to run it at 146C or 295F from here on, just looking to get that internal temperature up to 70 degrees C or 158F. So just under two hours later, you can see here now the bark and the temperature are spot on. So for me, that's the cue to wrap and tallow. Wrap it up nice and tight. I like to also then use the meter plus probe to actually hold the paper in place. Pop that wrapped brisket back on the barbie and monitor until you get into the 90 to 95 C or 194 to 203 F range. Pull 
this is where using something like the Meter Plus really comes into its own. As you can see on the app there, we're able to monitor the internal target and ambient temperatures simultaneously. Do remember to keep the barbecue fueled up as you go, but rather than filling it to the top, only add what you need. This way you'll save a bit of fuel for your next cook. So as we approach 13 hours total cooking time, we've hit the temps and feel that we're after. And even better, the meter agrees. So as we've hit that set point nice and early in the day, I'm now gonna hold this in the oven for two hours at just below 90 C, using the meter to ensure it doesn't keep cooking. So you could easily turn the barbecue down and do the same, but again, this is a good way to conserve some fuel for your next cook. So after that two hour hold in the oven, it's now feeling and probing absolutely fantastic. So now it's time to get those lovely beach towels, wrap it on up, and throw it into your esky for a nice long rest. So we'll see this guy in four hours time. Finally getting to serving time. What's cool to see here from the meter is it's still holding 60 degrees C or 140 F after that four hours resting in the esky. Well done if you've made it this far. Unwrap your meaty Christmas present and enjoy the reveal. Remember to always cut across the grain at this point. That's something that I was able to set up during the trim by putting a nice cut across the brisket so that I wouldn't lose my way. So I'm very happy with the feel of this as it's starting to carve and also seeing some beautiful colour showing that we've got uh, good smoke penetration into the brisket. If I could just find that camera. I'm very happy with how that slice flops across the knife. And the obligatory pull test. Very good. So again, if you'd like to try this yourself guys, the full written steps are in the description. Not gonna lie, it is delicious too. Do drop us a comment if you've got any questions. And thanks for watching. Good on you. Happy brisketing.